they look like they're gonna focus on the top side of the map, but they say, yeah, Lucian, Nambi, whatever. We're throwing axes, we're throwing spears and hooks. We're going death from below. Oh my God, this is gonna be pretty spicy in the bot lane, because when you go Draven, you kind of have to play around it, right? So gonna be really interesting to see how this works out. Maple gonna be playing a rolling Talia. champion here, busting out the Talia. And I don't know if, you, if you're a big champion Q guy, but uh, when he first came over, he was playing a lot of Roamers. He was playing a lot of Talia, a lot of Galio. Makes and sense. these were the champions, even Zoe was in there as well, mm -hmm. uh, where he could kind of push and move and make plays on the map. And to me, since I've seen Maple in an A, that is when I think he's actually at his best. Yeah. When he's able to get on the map, facilitate things. He's not a super dominant laner, right? But he is very, very smart about the game and how he thinks about the game, how he can move around the map. So I do think there's a, a, a lot to be said for the draft here for TSM, feels like solo on an island, roaming mid laner, early ganking jungler, and a really exactly. dominant 2v2. Yeah. See what they can get done. Yeah, I mean, I, that was the thing that stood out to me the most. If you want something to really facilitate players are just kind of caught in the midst of all of it, they're here to show that like, you know, it doesn't matter what's going on on the outside. Our team is here to be a competitive place. and. Look at that. Even TSM fan chat still in 2023, baby. Absolutely. Still a lot of love for this organization. You know, they have been so dominant in the LCS for so many years. Um, that, you know, it, it is a big change for TSM fans, right? You know, they went from making 10, 12 finals in a row to uh, now, you know, really kind of struggling in a lot of these games. Nice E level there from Solo. Uh, but it does mean no Q start. So not going to be slapping down those Entofos anytime soon. Uh, it is going to mean that a favorite matchup for Revenge uh, is going to be even more so towards his side. It is also Grasp on Revenge's side, so he's not going towards Conquer, more of a scaling rune. Mm -hmm. uh, it is going to be more about that early laning. Fallen. You just constantly try to poke away with Q every time you have Grasp ready. Poke, slap a vital, really just kind of poke and prod onto that Cassante. Um, and as we know, Jura really does well into tanks. It's also very, very easy uh, to actually answer things like the Q3 flip with your parry or even the W stun and actually stun the Cassante on that. So uh, we'll see how Revenge is going to be able to handle this. He's definitely been, I think, a bright spot for Immortals and is a strong carry player. Uh, even during some of his uh, strongest showings, uh, I think when I was speaking to James, their general manager, a lot of people will confuse Revenge as being like an older player that's been around the LCS for quite a while. He's only been here for two years. He yep. made his debut in 2021, and during that Xerxes area, they were a stronger top lane jungle duo. When Kenby came in, in a last summer split, Immortals were struggling to find their footing, but Kenby and Revenge are two people that have really bonded during the off season. And, uh, you know, Ken V for us Academy fans, we know him to be a strong carry player. He shines best on things like Graves and Lee Sin in the past, but for him playing Sejuani, even though it is the jungle meta, this does show us that he really wants to enable his whole lane. Absolutely, and, and I'm really excited to see Ken V's development, right? I think because he came in last year with a lot of hype and didn't immediately deliver, a lot of people have kind of written him off and kind of forgotten about Ken v. Uh, But Ken V, you know, in that 100 Thieves organization, deservedly built an enormous amount of hype around yeah. him you know, as this incredible carry player. You know, Kindred is my favorite champion, so I watched a lot of Kenvy because this was one of the Kindred guys in NA that really, really impressed. So like Kindred uh, Pentakill back yeah, 2020, I mean, baby. I've got a lot of a lot of hope for him, and, and hopefully you know, they can get to a more stable spot where he can really be enabled and, and develop into the player that I think a lot of us know he can be. Mm -hmm. Already Boogie looking for oh, some information. Has tactical and fleshy slightly overextended, but Kenvy is in the area. Depending on how fast he reacts, maybe he can salvage this play. Depending on who flashes. Oh, oh Boogie was trying to go for the flash prediction, but tactical patient as ever waits it out before burning both of his summoners. Yeah, try to go for the flash prediction, but generally when you're going through those plays, you want to at least have some sort of animation coming out first. Like try to go for an auto first, slow a down, Q, and then go for a Q, something like that. Try to bait out the flash early. I also think in this case, Case, because he's behind them, he didn't actually need to cocoon until after he flashed. So while he's looking for what would have been a really cool play, I think you can literally just walk up, you know, auto him, cue him, whatever, and then force him to flash because he's going to die mm -hmm. if he doesn't flash early and then you have the cocoon to potentially right. follow. Either way, it's still a good play. No summoners used by TSM and they get both of them off tactical. Already seeing the game plan from TSM have that early rotation from the Elise to make something happen. 
Now, first time, if it doesn't work, that's okay, because uh -oh. you can always return. Kenvi knows that this play is happening, but can he get here in time? They need to act fast here. Cocoon goes wide. Tactical dash dodges it out onto it, and Boogie, now in trouble, forced to flash away. And the teleport from Ablazov, willing to commit that for his team. Yeah, does, does drop the TP. That's actually the biggest deal out of this play, right? The fact that they actually get that TP out. You know, Boogie does have to blow his flash. They're going to try to stop to the recalls, perhaps. Uh, he couldn't stop the recall. If they could have actually griefed the Blaze Olive on that recall, he would have lost the entire wave mid. I still think he's going to lose a lot of it. Uh, yeah, he's actually going to lose the full wave, and it's going to push away from him. So mid lane, this is pretty costly for a Blaze Olive. Give him a lot to come down there and help him. Uh, as you see, you know, all the range minions will die. He already lost the cannon plus a couple of melees prior to this. And this next wave will mostly die and be pushing away. So definitely not what you want to see uh, as a Blaze Olive. But William can commit that TP because he knows if Draven dies there on that dive, they're free. Straight. Yeah, the disadvantage is even more costly than some of his own benefits in the mid lane. And I think, you know, once again, talking to a Blaze Olive during the offseason, that he wanted to be known as someone that Here comes is again. very versatile and willing to self-sacrifice for his team. But Boogie! If it doesn't work the first time, if it doesn't work the second time, maybe a third time, the boogie, it's not gonna happen. I mean, this is at least gameplay yeah. in a nutshell, right? Like, if it's working, gank more. If it's not working, gank more. You know, like, there's <laughs> there's no fallback plan on this champion. <laughs> You're not just like, all right, guys, we're playing for late. I'm going to go farm. And now Maple is going to join the party as well. Here we go. He's spotted, though. Great great positioning from Fleshy. He's actually just waiting. So he has the angle there. The positioning from TSM's bot lane was very aggressive. So they're like, we know what you're trying to do. Either way, they are still building advantages here. Yes, said one, he's going to be up a camp, but like, who cares? Uh, oh. Boogie, though, no flash remaining, remember. He's forced to drop down. No flash available, but... Tactical, not necessarily in range to threaten yeah. lethal on the boogie, just walks out. Yeah, and because he has no summoners, it's not like he can really go that aggressive there. You know, if you over chase, uh, Chime and, and Neo will come over and you'll get punished. So uh, a little bit fast on, on the trigger for that ignite, I would say. Uh, but either way, slight advantages being built up here uh, by TSM on that bottom side. But you look at top lane and that's kind of where it becomes a little bit more problematic. We'll see how much Solo can actually collect at his turret uh, because there are a lot of extra minions for him to farm. And I will say that Solo is, is one of the best top laners in the league at loss mitigation. When he gets kind of hung out to dry and left in bad spots, uh, he's often able to really stay pretty close in yeah. those matchups. And it's one of the reasons that a lot of teams have actually just brought him in. You know, he gets put in these weird team situations where it's like, he's just a mercenary. Someone needs a top laner. All right, here he comes. He's going to get in there and he's going to get you some wins. And that's why he's kind of built a brand, maybe not intentionally as a mid-game stabilizer or like a mid-season stabilizer for multiple teams but this is the first time in a while that solo has been brought in as a starter so yeah this is where he gets a chance to really give teams a reason why it's like hey this is why you should take a chance on me earlier than when your org is already on fire you know? yeah absolutely you know we got to talk to some some players you know about about him and his development and uh talk to even a place all of us got to work with him last year uh, a little bit and, you know, just talking about his, his kind of improvements as far as his attitude and how he approaches improvement and, and practice and, you know, even just, like, conflict resolution and all these things that I think have sometimes held him back from finding those starting positions. Yeah. And it does seem like, uh, at least from those conversations, that he really has uh, improved and become, you know, much more kind of improvement-focused and you know, really doing a good job, I think, you know, working on, on those skills. Fleshy may be looking for a play here. Neo still has Flash and E available, so... Even then gets pulled in he's not afraid to just fire right on back yep gonna get a nice little double tap off there uh, out to an early farm lead here down on the bot side it's really just kind of bot versus top but i will say like playing draven from behind is, is pretty terrible tactical definitely has to make sure he doesn't die so at the very least he has the potential to come back through a cash in he's got 118 stacks so not the most but not too bad it's, it's 40 gold base plus 2.5 gold for every stack you have plus right. the potential kill. Mm -hmm. So if you do get a kill and you have 100 stacks and that's 250 gold, you get the 40 base, you are starting to really get a lot. Um, and in some of the slow games, sometimes you even can just get a massive spike and you can farm it up to two, 300 stacks and then cash in. So far with the advantages that TSM have really garnered for themselves off of Boogie's early roam towards the bottom side of the map, Neo's second highest in gold, Maple first because of Blaze Olive committed that TP early on. TSM already trying to use that advantage as fast as possible with first dragon stack. Yep, they do grab that up. You know, not the earliest possible, but about eight and a half, they are going to grab that for themselves. So feeling pretty good about it. 
Uh, you can see it's tier two boots rush for Buki. So this is very standard rushing tier two boots if you want to just continue the ganking. Right? Yeah. You know, just continue having that additional move speed, get around the map, continue to pressure because that's really what this champion can do. Uh, I think, you know, mortals are going to be pretty happy that none of the looks have actually worked out for him yet. Uh, because Sedge Wani on the other side, Kenby doesn't really need to force anything. He's going to have a lot of value in those later stages, whereas for Elise, it's really tough to pilot this champion in 5v5. Yeah. It's very, very difficult. Unless you're monster fed and you can just jump back line and one, one shot someone, yeah. you're kind of just stuck playing on the sides, trying to look for picks from Brush, and really looking for more of that scrappy playstyle. And you can see Solo very nervous about the fact that Blaze Olive had gone missing from mid, right? So you, know, you, you look towards mid, a Blaze Olive steps up towards top, and you see this line of wards here. They have the pink ward control on that top side river, which means with that stolen Talia ultimate, Silas could just be surfing on up. So that's why Solo backs it up, does have to give up more farm, does have to give up plates, but it's those little plays that allow you to make sure you're not giving up that killer, you're not giving up that big advantage. And that's one of the things that makes him strong as a weak side player. Yeah, Solo already recognizes there's a huge gold advantage in my mid lane and bot lane. I don't need to carelessly throw that away just for my own advantage. My team already doing great. Now, yep. Immortals still have a Rift Herald to play with as Kenley was able to get that trade off while they secured the first dragon on the flip side. What you doing, Flesh? And I'm just saying hi to Neo as he just waits for the wave to crash in. Yeah, maybe checking if there's a pink in that brush too, if you W by it, uh, see if there's a reward he can actually grab up. Uh, didn't know that Neo was in the brush, but Boogie and Maple moving down are spotted by that ward we can see on screen. And Blaze all just going to try to harass them as they try to move back up. Kenby now, though, moving down, does have ulti available, so could look for a potential play here. Okay, Blaze all is potentially going a little crazy on Maple, but putting out a mana here. Maple throws some spells on back. Nothing. Yeah, nothing much coming from that, but nice little sidestep from a Blaze Olive. They're dodging out on the flank. Scouting for Kenby, they don't see him and now. Oh, 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 Glacial Prison! Great stuff from Kenby, catches the clip, follows with the Arctic Assault as well. First blood for Fleshy as he finds death from below. And TSM Advantage now goes sunken under. Immortals with the first blood of the game. Yeah, that is massive, getting that first blood. And Draven, I think, even got the cash in because of the, the Pike interaction there. So he gets that cash in because Pike actually got it. Uh, getting your cut, I believe, does give that over. Yeah, his stacks are, are down to zero, so he got Let's it. So that's go. a lot of gold. Uh, and now, just like that, Slingshot's himself a good 300, 400 gold ahead of his lane opponent. Has the completed shield bow. So we're going to be really, really happy about that. Pike getting the kill is absolutely massive. It's just a really good bait. him I think, had an idea that they could be around. You know, the sea chime steps up, he throws the bubble in the brush, like, okay, no one's there for sure. Oh, and then Neo going man. with the calling, it's just a great bait. Envy is there. The hook lands immediately from Fleshy onto Neo, and then E forward, alt lands, flashes over with that same E for the double stun. Yeah. That is nice. Well, man's gonna have to rename to Flashy. That was clean <laughs> on the mic. Now, Fleshy, a lot of people were having question marks about this guy because no one knew where he came from unless you were a Turkish League fan. And now he's up on the top side of the map, once again, ready to make moves. They don't even need him. Revenge takes out Solo by himself. And now Boogie might be... No, he's fine. Yep, no flash, but no problem. They're not going to continue the chase. Another kill up on that top side, though, and it's Revenge. Already had a pretty huge CS advantage you know, due to the matchup, due to the pressure. And now this is this is where it gets real sad. And you're playing weak side, and you're already kind of giving up CS. You're already kind of down. Then they get a kill. Then they get the Herald. MB should just leave and try to give as much as is possible to Revenge, because this turret is going down, and that is going to be an enormous gold lead now for Revenge. In a favorable matchup where he has a scaling advantage, he's up 2,000 oh, gold. Oh, God. I'm not gonna lie. I don't play top lane. I, you know, that's, but that's I, smart. Yeah. Good. <laughs> that, that is a good decision on my yeah. behalf. But whenever I do play with people who are junglers and I get autofill top lane, if I have to deal with that, I'm just quitting the game. <laughs> I'm just like, sorry guys, I don't know how to play out this advantage at this point and, and on. This is, this is too much. It's tough, man. I mean, if you're if you're solo from this point, it's hug the tower and get as much farm as you can, right? Just pray. But it, it gets it gets to a point where you know you're getting pressured under tower and that can get really really difficult. Uh, so we'll see what they can get done. Mortals massive lead here. You know, TSM drafted for that bot lane pressure. It was three, four, five ganks very early on from Boogie down towards that bottom side. They only got the one dragon from it though, 
and it's actually Draven who's heading gold now. So really, TSM have not been able to get much at all uh, from this draft, and, and they're going to be playing from a very difficult spot. Yeah, and their engages are really far few in between. Buki doesn't have flash. He's able to walk away safely. Neo maybe looking on this side. Great calling opening forces Tactical to flash away. Maple looking for more damage. Blaze Olive almost goes down, gets a flash out. Oh, nicely done. Piercing light through the minions, and now Maple's on. Never mind. Not the chase. Yeah, yeah, he realizes who he's chasing. That <laughs> support can do damage. That's not a Nami. That is a Pike with ultimate available. You don't want to be surfing in at 20% HP. No. Uh, but that was just an overchase from Immortals. They had such a winning position. But you can't fight through a corridor against Talia. And if we can see that replay again, we'll see, you know, it was the early stages of it going heavily towards them. They had a free dragon to take from that position. But as soon as you walk through that corridor into Maple, the rocks go down, he gets a two-man seismic shove, tactical is lit up, and everyone has to run. Yeah. Playing right into the hands of what TSM wanted from Immortals. A little bit of growing pains as you know, Immortals rebuilding this roster, putting in a Blaze Hall of Tactical and Fleshy, but get a chance to see that replay once again. Yeah, it's really just all about this positioning here. You know, you'll watch as they actually move forward, and then look at them. The double knockup, double stun there, Tactical very, very low. They just kind of get AoE'd up as they try to walk through that corridor. And when your carries are low, there's nothing else going on. A Blaze Olive stolen calling, trying to chop him up. Not going to be able to get a kill down on that bottom side, but at least protects the tower. Uh, but that being said, I mean, it's, it's a big win for TSM because it at least gives you some hope. You have an out of a potential Dragon Soul. Sure. Right? So they got that second Dragon and they can at least say, hey, we, we maybe can get this. We can try to play for every Dragon. That could try to eliminate a lot of the, the disadvantage that we're at. Accelerate to the point where maybe you can play for Elder Dragon on top of it. And if you got Elder, anything is possible, especially at that point in the game. But Immortals, despite a little bit of a flub around that second Dragon, still had the Rift Herald to play for, knock down the mid tier one turret, and they still have overall map advantage. Yep, and they have this massive Fiora. No one can really answer in that side lane. They do have the ability to try to potentially you know, take down Revenge if he over pushes or if they can find you know, an unspotted Talia to try to get out on the map and, and make something happen. There's some wards, though, already trying to protect Revenge. You can see, you know, those couple wards, even Jungle, they obviously still have their River Vision. They have this one mid lane ward. So a good four or five wards up on that top side trying to protect Revenge. That's what gives him that safety to actually be pushing up towards that tier two. Uh, and it is TSM on the other side of the map trying to make something happen. And that warding, you know, it's not just protecting revenge right now. It's actually allowing Immortals to know that TSM must be bot side, right? Because if we're not seeing anyone top, they're not all showing in the lane. Hmm. They got to be there by process of elimination. Put on their Sherlock Holmes cap <laughs> and start deducing. It's like, hmm. Watson, I've got it. <laughs> it's Shime in the bot lane with Nanami. <laughs> Kind of chilling for the next couple of minutes. No dragon to play for. It is that just exchange of how TSM can deal with revenge on the top side of the map. We were talking about content earlier and how much everyone from the LCS side, a lot of teams have really stepped up. Immortals, shout out to Revenge, honestly, for the personal vlogs he's been doing. Huge, huge crowd fan favorite as well for anyone who has been tuning in. Your Revenge is a, is a really fun personality. Uh, yeah. He's, he's, I think, one of those players that is underrated a bit, you know, maybe a little bit lesser known, a little bit uh, kind of overlooked at times, but has had, has had some really strong carry performances in the LCS, and one of those players they're trying to develop. We'll see if they can actually catch out Tactical here. Oh, he's super low. Run! Oh, he cannot escape. Maple throws one more rock at his back. Going to get knocked down here. Immortal's going to do everything they can to save this turret, but I don't think it's going to be enough off this menu wave. That is map advantage. Once again, wrestle over to TSM. Yeah, that's actually a really big kill as well. That's a punish on the earlier flash from that overstay at the dragon where they chased in. He flashed out there, and this time he loses his stacks, right? So he's back to up to about 150 stacks. Lose so 75% of those when you do go down. So a lot of gold left on the table there with that kill onto the Draven, but Revenge pushing down here on that bottom side. Likely we'll get this turret very, very low. Not sure if he can actually finish it off or not. He's going to stay around, though, and do just that. And may have him pretty close to his second item here. We can see Solo getting aggressive on the Blaze Olive, looking for the fight. 
Both of them using all out here, but Ablaze Olive, he's the one that's losing the fight. And even if he gets that alive, you've got Boogie and Neo waiting to clean up the pieces, but <laughs> Solo doesn't need it. He gets the solo kill. Man, he's just left alone on an island in a counter matchup, put down, put behind, still finds the 1v1 kill here onto a Blaze Olive. That is big for Solo and has to be feeling really, really good about it. Watch it one more time. A Blaze Olive here. You know, clearing out the vision, was spotted, walks in, and he just feels like he can actually stop this play. So the TP is coming out. He hits him with the all out. Uh, the E was actually blocked by a minion, so he actually steals that ulti, uses it on him. But then Solo just playing this out very, very well, lands the W stun. I think bonus damage may be even hit against the wall there. The all out comes in, pulls him even further back towards Boogie. So even if he was losing in that 1v1, he's pushing him back towards that Elise who could have helped him finish it off, but doesn't need it in the end. Flashes over, chases him down, and gets that one more to go. Potentially an oversight from a Blaze Olive was feeling maybe, oh, I got this, I can win this, guys. And then calm to here. Oh, shit, shit, my bad, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we got another fight. Tidal Wave already cuts off most of Immortal's members, forces them to retreat. And now they're in the corridors of this jungle, running down the river. Engage tools are somewhat limited. Maple still has this wall that he could use to potentially cut them off. No calling, no Tidal Wave, we've already shown. Solo's got all out coming up in a bit, but a Blaze all finds the mid laner, but he gets taken out by Neo. Now Immortals have to fight in a four on five situation, down numbers. The dragon has been around. And look at Maple, looking to cut them off. A beautiful flank from the side, and Maple finds the flank angle. Immortals losing out on Kenvi. No one could potentially steal the dragon away with a 50-50 spite out of this, but TSM don't even care about the dragon. They want to look for more kills. Tactical is slain by Neo. That is huge, getting a couple more kills there as Immortals tried to pull off this pincer play. But it's so tough as Fiora to just run straight at the enemy team. So even with a Blaze Olive coming in from the side, he just gets lit up. They just kill off a Blaze Olive very, very quickly here. And we can see it one more time. It's the initial TP in. Revenge comes in. Has to actually drop the parry immediately. Nice abduct over the wall there, just getting out to those Raptors. But then I feel like you need Revenge to be coming around from the top, like coming around from like this angle or something. Uh, instead, he's actually with the team, so a Blaze Olive comes in from the side, but then these four members trying to move in can't actually really get much of anything done. You know, in goes a Blaze Olive, but he just is killed off immediately, and it's Solo standing in the front, blocking out everyone else. Has those four members coming forward into it, but he has the W up, has that damage reduction, and is able to shut them out of the fight. So smart team fighting, you know, patient play here from TSM, and then a great wall from the side from Maple who is hiding around, and they combo it up with the W stun there from Cassante into the wall onto that Sejuani. They burst him down. That guarantees they're going to get the dragon, but they want more. Chime is flashing in. Boogie is flashing in. <laughs> they know they have those slows, and they're able to get a couple kills there onto Neo. Has been solved. Uh, I, think, I think we are going to be getting back in the game here. It is resumed. Yep, we're in there. Here's the, here's the good news. You're going to be casting LCS every week, so you can save that topic for later. Yeah! I'll try to get that in on the next one. Happens to the best of us. Sometimes you have a really cool point. You're like, I'm about to say this, and then they fight. And they're like, all right, wait. Now I'm really about to say this, and then something else happens. I feel like that's the bane of every color caster. You you find something interesting, like, oh, look at this cool thing. has got ship. Fight. Follow the game. <laughs> You're not allowed to say it. All right, well, TSM, you know, Immortals, uh, did have a massive lead early on, but they've kind of bungled it. And it is now TSM only down 1K with Neo looking really strong and they're on soul point. And if Neo actually gets this IE finished up here, you know, within a reasonable amount of time, I'm not sure how much gold he has in pocket. Let's see, he only has 500. So he's, it's not likely that he's actually gonna get the IE before this next fight. But uh, when he gets that, he's gonna be monstrously strong. Tactical has yet to finish his second item. So yeah. he's pretty far behind. And as we've seen, it's a lot easier to, to team fight on that TSM side, even though they do have the Elise. It didn't really matter because Cassante, as well as Maple here, you know, on the Talia, that is really making things difficult, I think, for Immortal Sex you. Yeah, the creative team fighting from TSM as a whole five man unit has been honestly impressive to see, just navigating a, a lot of these really difficult situations from Immortals. Uh oh. Potential pick on the Kenvi. I mean, thankfully, he is Sejuani. And he's already popped the Radiant Virtue with that ultimate, so he's healing back on up a little bit. He should be getting out alive. TSM, I don't think they're going to be looking at the Baron. So for this team, Neo, who's right now 3-1-2, I think this guy's been playing 
with a huge chip on his shoulder. If you think about his kind of career trajectory, oh, wait, wait, all out. Nice parry. Actually got parried there by Revenge. He, because he scooped him back into the turret, so then he's trying to look for the all out to pull him actually under tower with already heating up. That could have been a great play, but a really well timed parry from Revenge immunes that. So Solo goes all out, but his friend does not come with him. <laughs> Beautiful mind games from Revenge and just great patience and timing. TSM able to get the turret on the top side of the map is fishing for another engagement. Fleshy easily dodges out on it. I'm, yeah. I know you're pointing to me and say, hey, do you want to talk about Neo again? I'm afraid. I'm afraid we're going to get more fighting. <laughs> Go for it. All right, five seconds in. All right. This is my time to shine, baby. Storytelling at its max. Okay, Neo, this guy, Ding a Toss, LCS starter. Bumped down to Academy, given over to spawn to give him a chance. And then Neo, just drop, goes to TSM. And I think this is someone that really wants to show that as he was like one of those early Academy prospects during the, the 2020 season, 2021 coming up through the, the system and then getting his LCS start. Neo so far, creative flank angles, I, I, the culling, being able to get that pincer maneuver on the team fighting. And this is an AD carry that when speaking with him and Chime, or Chime specifically, he and Neo are very motivated to show up everyone, especially everyone that has doubts about this organization team as a whole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, again, at his best, I think he's been a really, really strong team fighter. I feel like it was the pairing with Afro Moon probably a, a while ago that he looked really good. Yeah. In, you know, it feels like kind of everyone looks good when they play with Afro Moon, to be honest. Shout out to uh, Shout out to Afro Moon, just announced his retirement. Very sad about that. We miss you already. Gets him gatekeeping this entry. Oh, nice glacial person from Ken V. Oh, Neo might just be blown up here, but the positioning backwards as he unloads with the calling forces Immortals to retreat back through the corridor. Yeah, Solo shows up with a TP, drops the all out immediately, uh, but not able to really grab anyone with it, unfortunately for them. It's just a another kind of trade of cooldowns. Uh, but Neo at the end of the day doesn't actually have to use his summoners, so it is those two flashes forced from Kempi as well as the Blaze Hall of. Uh, just trying to grief some of the the resets there, trying to stop them from being able to reset prior to this dragon. I think Maple wanted them to be stuck out on the map. Mm -hmm. He's still full mana and he didn't really have a buy, so I think he's trying to screw up those res timers or rather the back timers. As we'll see, you know, TSM, no vision yet around that dragon. Neither team really has established any vision around this dragon. Now they are moving in to try to get some. Plus you're gonna try to contest it, but we'll see if you can really find anything because this is the fight for Soul. Blaze Olive still down towards bot and tactical as oh, well as revenge are going up towards the, the Baron. They're gonna yeah. try to actually two man the Baron potentially here. I I don't think but there's they're on any vision. Chance. No, it's not gonna happen fast enough. TSM are already booking it over to the top side of the map. I think they have Neo and Maple just yeah. two manning the dragon and I mean, it was a nice call. Unfortunately for Immortals, there was already vision from TSM that established it, and now free soul for TSM. Yeah, and this is something that, it was a play that people used to look for like a lot back in the day that sometimes worked, but now everyone kind of knows when when you're going for Dragon and you are in the power position, if they try to trade for Baron, you just leave one to two people and everyone else moves up, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just never really going to work out uh, unless the, the team on Baron is the one that yeah. has like overwhelming damage and kind of like instantly kill it. Uh, so TSM, you're able to grab that soul for free. Immortals not feeling like they are in a position to team fight. Uh, and whether or not that is correct is the situation that they are in now. Revenge still really strong in the 1v1, but Solo has, has done a good enough job of just actually holding him at towers that it's not like he's threatening the base. So it's not really mattering. Like, yes, you would win that 1v1 potentially, but Solo's never really going to give you the extended 1v1. He's right. just going to keep focusing on clearing out the waves. And if you overcommit by the turret and he can flip you into the turret, then all of a sudden you're going to lose the 1v1. Yeah. You know, there's definitely a lot of top laners that might take that ego check with you against Revenge if you're in Solo's position, but Solo drops it completely. It's like, listen, I don't need to do anything. You need to come towards mm -hmm. my way. And then, as you said, that's when things can get dicey on the Katsante side of the matchup. For TSM, once again, eyes on Neo. You, you can even tell that Immortals have been trying to get this guy, but no sums having been burned either. Now Revenge finds himself pinned. Boogie, repelling in, looks for the cocoon. Great riposte from Revenge. Blocks it out, makes it out alive. A yeah, nice escape there from Revenge, but kind of poor aim uh, from the E on Maple. You know you want it, you know exactly where he's going to go, right? You know that he has to actually dash over your wall, so you need to throw the Unraveled Earth so that it's actually going over your wall as well, so that when he cues through, he's going to get stunned up. But at the very least, they get that pressure, they get the reset. Revenge has no TP. So this is going to be really tough to contest. Revenge is going to stay around, but he's at like 40% health with no mana. 
Chime, though, getting chunked down by that Draven ult. Oh, they just want to turn on to Fleshy. Neo opens up with the culling. Gets a little bit more damage into the backhand. Ken V throws out Glacial Prison just to sum them up, but Neo doesn't even worry about burning summoners because no one is really there to follow up for Immortals. It's more of a, please stop chasing us. Yep, exactly. You know, Neo backstepped at an appropriate time. Had he continued chasing for it and got Glacial Prison, they might have actually fully turned on him and tried to burst him down. Uh, but he did not, so TSM not willing to actually flip that Baron. It is still Immortals with the gold lead, but it just doesn't really feel like it because it's only a Revenge, and Revenge isn't really joining. Revenge is actually heading for the base, and you can see on the minimap, he's going to actually oh. head for the base. They're going to try to stop this. Can he actually get in and steal it? It's up to Kenvi. Immortals, all you got to do is just stall this as long as you can. If you don't get the Baron, just give Revenge time to unlock the gates over on the other side of the map. Kenvi has already fallen. A recall is coming in from Chime. And I don't think Revenge is going to be able to get that much. Gets the Inhibitor Tower. Is he going to chance it for the Inhibitor as well? Oh, he's got to get out now. Everyone is there. Yeah, and, and TSM is actually going to move down. They can actually go for a long chase. If Solo wants to continue chasing, no. They're going to decide, hey, it's not actually worth the time. Uh, so they will let him get out. But it is Baron for TSM. Multiple kills for TSM. They are looking really good. Nice sidestep there from Tactical. Avoids the seismic shove but it's not really going to do much for them here. You know, Kenby just couldn't actually find the angle on the Blast Cone to get in. It was a good job from Solo, you know, using the all out, trying to CC him up, push Kenby away, because as soon as they see Revenge bot lane, they know that all Immortals is really going for is, is a flip, right? They're trying yeah. to steal it and hope that then you can delay the bases, Revenge takes the base, some sort of a situation like that, because at this point, that's really all Immortals can hope for. But when the enemy team gets Baron, Split Machine becomes so hard, because yeah. You can't actually wave clear fast enough. So, you know, if Revenge wants to stay in a side lane, TSM can just bull rush down mid lane with five, and they're going to be able to really assert their dominance with the extra man. Especially considering what Immortals opted in for with this composition. There's no Azir here. There's no yeah. Victor that can give you that stronger form of wave clear to stall out the game so that your split pusher can get things done. This is a Silas. This is a Draven. They had, obviously, you know, different expectations to how this game was going to go. They had this snowball planned in mind, it just didn't pan out that way, and now they're dealing with the repercussions of it. Absolutely, and here comes TSM. You know, looking to just bully it down this lane. Mid lane's being pushed up, but Solo's just going forward. He wants to fight. Takes no damage from the tower, <laughs> no damage from the stolen calling. He does not care at all. And just wait until he goes all out. I mean, you see it full tank and then just turn into an all damage threat. Maple cuts off any lines of retreat from Kenvi, potentially pushes him back, gets the flash out. Tidal wave just causes even more distress as TSM is laying waste to the base of Immortals. One more Nexus turret stands between them and certified victory. Immortals now have to throw everything on the line to potentially defend. But the rest of TSM looking to make their way slowly Revenge through this is one. The wave. Kenvi gets caught out. Neo gets another kill for himself. And now TSM, they jump in the warp one by one. Revenge has potentially a flank angle, but you have to coordinate well. You have to do it on equal terms. And Immortals, they're just throwing themselves in one by one. TSM on the doorsteps of claiming their first victory of the spring split. And a strong start for them in the LCS. Nice comeback from TSM. Immortals had a huge early game lead. But it's TSM battling back, punishing the overextensions there from Immortals. A couple times, Immortals overplayed their hand. Yeah. And TSM really took full advantage of that, able to get some great punishes, started to stack those dragons up, move towards the soul, and Neo having a great game here. 4-1-7, and seven, 